Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway. I wrote this book, On This Day in Tudor History, as well as a few other Tudor history books. Now today I'm taking you back to the 21st of June 1529, so the reign of King Henry VIII. But first of all, I need to give you a bit of background to this event. For on the 31st of May 1529, a special court, a legacine court presided over legates, had opened at Blackfriars in London to hear the case for the annulment of King Henry VIII's marriage to his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Now, as I said, this was a legatine court presided over by papal legates. It was presided over by Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, who'd been made the Pope's vice regent, and Cardinal Lorenzo Campeggio, the papal legate, who'd been sent to England specifically for this uh, case. On the 18th of June 1529, Henry and Catherine had been summoned to appear at the court. The king sent proxies instead of going himself, but Catherine appeared in person to make her protest, protesting that the judges were biased and that court proceedings should not even be taking place while her case was still pending at Rome. She'd appealed directly to the Pope. But on this day in Tudor history, the 21st of June, 1529, both Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon attended court to testify in front of the two cardinals. Now, George Cavendish, who was Cardinal Wolsey's gentleman usher, who wrote a biography of Cardinal Wolsey, described how the king sat under a cloth of estate and Catherine sat some distance beneath the king. Also present was Stephen Gardner as scribe, William Warren, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Richard Sampson and Thomas Abel as counsellors for the King, then John Fisher, Bishop of Rochester, and Cuthbert Tunstall, Bishop of St Asaph, as counsellors for the Queen. The papal commission was read out to the court and the crier officially summoned the king to court, crying, King Henry of England, come into the court. The king rose and responded, here, my lords. The crier then called Catherine, Queen of England, come into the court. Rather than simply saying, here, my lord, uh, and confirming her attendance, Catherine got up. She approached the king and she knelt at his feet. And in what was described as broken English, she then made what historian David Starkey calls the speech of her life. Now I'm going to read it in full to you because it is an incredible speech, an amazing speech. And whatever you think of Catherine of Aragon, this has to be, I think, her finest hour. It is incredible. Sir, I beseech you for all the loves that have been between us and for the love of God, let me have justice and right. Take of me some pity and compassion for I am a poor woman and a stranger born out of your dominion. I have here no assured friend and much less indifferent counsel. I flee to you as to the, as to the head of justice within this realm. Alas, sir, wherein have I offended you, or what occasion of displeasure? Have I designed against your will and pleasure, intending, as I perceive, to put me from you? I take God and all the world to witness that I have been to you a true, humble and obedient wife, ever comfortable to your will and pleasure, that never said or did anything to the contrary thereof being always well pleased and contented with all things wherein you had any delight or dalliance, whether it were in little or much. I never grudged in word or countenance or showed a vis visage or spark of discontentation. I loved all those whom ye loved only for your sake, whether I had cause or no, and whether they were my friends or my enemies. This twenty years I have been your true wife or more, and by me ye have had diverse children, 
although it hath pleased God to call them out of this world, which hath been no default in me. And when ye had me at first, I take God to my judge, I was a true maid without touch of man. And whether it be true or no, I put it to your conscience. If there be any just cause by the law that ye can allege against me, either of dishonesty or any other impediment to banish and put me from you, I am well content to depart to my great shame and dishonour. And if there be none, then here I most lowly beseech you, let me remain in my former estate and receive justice at your hands. The king, your father, was in the time of his reign of such estimation through the world for his excellent wisdom that he was accounted and called of all men the second Solomon. And my father, Ferdinand, king of Spain, who was esteemed to be one of the wittiest princes that reigned in Spain many years before, were both wise and excellent kings in wisdom and princely behaviour. It is not therefore to be doubted, but that they elected and gathered as wise counsellors about them as to their high discretions was thought meet. Also, as me seemeth, there was in those days as wise as well-learned men and men of as good judgment as be at this present in both realms, who thought then the marriage between you and me good and lawful. Therefore, it is a wonder to hear what new inventions are now invented against me that never intended but honesty, and cause me to stand to the order and judgment of this new court, wherein ye may do me much wrong, if ye intend any cruelty. For ye may condemn me for lack of sufficient answer, having no indifferent counsel, but such as be assigned me, with whose wisdom and learning I am not acquainted. Ye must consider that they cannot be indifferent counsellors for my part, which be your subjects, and taken out of your own counsel before, wherein they be made privy, and dare not, for your displeasure, disobey your will and intent, being once made privy thereto. Therefore I most humbly require you in the way of charity and for the love of God who is the just judge to spare me the extremity of this new court until I may be advertised what way and order my friends in Spain will advise me to take. And if ye will not extend to me so much indifferent favour, your pleasure then be fulfilled and to God I commit my cause. With that said, Catherine rose to her feet, curtsied to the king and walked out of the court, ignoring those who tried to make her return to her seat and saying, on, on, it makes no matter for it is no impartial court for me. Therefore, I will not tarry. Go on. After a few minutes of stunned silence, which I can imagine after that speech and her striding out of the court like that, Henry VIII addressed the court. He started off by praising his wife. For as much as the queen is gone, I will in her absence declare unto you all my lords here presently assembled, she hath been to me as true, as obedient, and as conformable a wife as I could in my fantasy wish or desire. She hath all the virtuous qualities that ought to be in a woman of her dignity or in any other of baser estate. Surely she is also a noble woman born, if nothing were in her, but only her conditions will well declare the same. But he then continued by repeating what he'd said at Bridewell Palace in 1528 about his concerns over the marriage, i.e. that his conscience was troubled because he'd acted contrary to God's law in marrying his brother's widow, and that he believed that the Pope should never have issued a dispensation for such a marriage. He couldn't outdo his wife, though. Catherine must surely have stolen the show that day. After hearing from both sides, the court was then adjourned for the day. In July 1529, Cardinal Campeggio adjourned the court for a summer recess, but the court never reopened. And this was a huge blow for Henry VIII, as he'd fully expected the court to rule in his favour. 
The marriage, of course, wasn't annulled until nearly four years later in May 1533. So Henry VIII had to wait an extraordinarily long time to get his marriage annulled and to be able to marry Anne Boleyn. So on this day in Tudor history, I think it is safe to say that Queen Catherine of Aragon stole the show, stole the limelight. What an incredible speech from someone who was an incredible lady. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as new videos go live. You can, of course, give me a like as well. And thank you for all your comments. I don't get a chance to read all of them, but it is so wonderful when I do get a chance to read your thoughts on these events and these people who are so fascinating to us today. I'll be back with another Tudor, ooh, Tudor treat. That's hard to say, Tudor treat tomorrow. So see you then. Take care.